Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever time of day this video finds you. It's your boy Jay here, and today, today, we got a very, 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 very special guest on the channel, man. My man, Coyote Wildfire, man. What's going on, man? How you doing? <laughs> hey, Jay, I'm doing great. So, I don't know if you actually knew, but my name is Jade. Oh, so okay. Jay and Jade, let's go. All oh, right, we're cooking yes. tonight. The JJ, yes, bro, the, the JJ cast. I, I still don't know exactly what I'm going to call this. Like, I was like, Jay cast? Do I do that? <laughs> hey, you can if you, you want. You know what? It, it might be Destiny, bro. It, it, it might just have to be Jay cast episode one, but I don't know. We're going to have a conversation <laughs> tonight. Um, he, uh, my man, Coyote Wildfire, uh, I first like saw you when we got the news that Wilds like existed, right? Like, and we were all right. calling it like Monster Hunter 6. Ooh, what is it and then <laughs> boom they tell us it's 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 monster in the wilds and then you had made a video and like i was like oh who's this new dude you know what i'm saying i watched a couple of your videos like clearly you're super passionate you you do the the super in-depth almost frame by frame like hey you're super in-depth with watching trailers and stuff i was like oh this not this guy's he, he's going places and i watched that <laughs> subscriber count kind of go up i was like oh okay and then um so yeah man just just tell us a little bit about yourself man what what was your first monster hunter game and all that let's go who's coyote so okay so coyote has been around since playing oh, goodness on xbox live back on the og xbox so that's oh. been where the name came around from uh boy way back in the day now, where where I went from there, um, it was just an online handle, and then I was actually a Twitch streamer for nearly eight years. It's actually how I met my wife. Uh, we were both uh, leaders in a fellow streaming community, and we were leaders in training in the same training group, and so on and so forth. We we started talking. Um, the the retirement for me from Twitch was back in 2022. And I knew that, like, hey, listen, if I'm ever going to get back into it, I might do, like, maybe YouTube. And then, of course, TGA drops the Wilds announced trailer, TGA 2023, and it's all up in lights. We hear the music pumping. This guy's come, you know, he's literally running down a, a stretch of, of sand. Yeah. And that, that was it. I was like, that's my moment. Because mm -hmm. I, I hearken from Third Fleet. So my first one was, yeah. <laughs> my first... Oh yeah, you know, you know. So like, I, I oh, so good, so My good. Guys so try baby, bro. All the best creators are try babies. Come on now. <laughs> Portable third. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I took I took Japanese for four years in high school, um, and I, I was in Japan actually uh, back in 2013. Uh, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I, I've had a, a, a big um, interest in the culture, a big interest in the language, and of course, food. Uh, it probably doesn't show as much as it probably could, but uh, I definitely <laughs> enjoy myself some Japanese food. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, we just came back from eating sushi, dog. Like, yes, man. Okay. Let's go. Yo. So, so I, I picked up Portable Third because I was like, yo, I, I've never played Monster Hunter. And a buddy of mine was like, hey, if you like Dark Souls, play Monster Hunter. It's really big in Japan and you can kind of practice your Japanese. And I'm like, OK, well, cool. This is like above 12th grade level Japanese here. I'm yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know like a kindergartner's amount of Japanese, but Damn, um, that's deep end. Like he was like, ah, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that literally was. I had no floaties or nothing, man. It was sink or swim. I was diving in. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> thankfully, the pool wasn't empty, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, holy. Wow, that's that's dope, dog. Like you would actually in that. Japan. That's that's crazy. So like you've got that like uh like Japan sort of view cuz like I know that Monster Hunter is like oh in Japan, right? Like it's it's right. huge, but like yeah. I, I don't know. My my I can't fathom it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've always kind of <laughs> done this in secret like my story with with the uh, with Try. I was just in Walmart one day and it came up on the TV. You know they used to have the TVs hanging down playing the trailers. Playing like this? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, and the, I think the controllers got all jacked up. You know how it is. And, oh, uh, yeah. They were playing, like, Tri's, like, promotional thing. And I'm looking at this like, dang, he about to, dang, they fighting. Hold on, what are you fighting? Is that a crocodile? Like, that's <laughs> I know, you know right? It was like Jurassic like, Park, and I you was know? Like, I'm going to get this. So, like, my mom used uh -huh. to give me gas money uh, to put in a Honda. I had I drove, like, a Honda at the time. I, I just didn't go nowhere. Saved up my money. Uh, bought the copy of Try, 
and it actually came with. I still have it under my desk. It's my Wii U. Does, did it have the oh. communicator? No, nah, not the, the communicator. The Wii it came with the bro. The yes, sir. Yeah, it, it came in like a, a box, bro. Like it was a. Wow, really? Yeah, it came with a box because this came in the box as well, and it was like, yo, if you're gonna play this game, right. it's a real game. You gotta play. With it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. like, oh, dude, and and from there, I just kind of just did it. Like I. It's so different from uh, most other people's stories because everyone's like, yeah, I got a friend who got me into it, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was just in right. Walmart. My dumb ass was like. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever like stand there playing at the kiosk or just like enamored by video games at the time and you're stood up like that where you craned your neck so hard you get a cramp? <laughs> yes, yes. As a kid and you're know, shorter. Yeah, bro. So mm -hmm. you just there and I. <laughs> oh, what is going on here? Yeah, it's good, dude. It's good stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. So you've been playing since since way back in the gap portable third holy cow okay so uh then that that leads me to like what made today happen um recently you know i'm on this quest to hunt alatreon at least one time with every weapon in iceborne put in my insect glaive run and you were like yo from a glaive man bro you killed it and i was like what i didn't know you were a glaive player bro like, damn you yeah. dunked on him though you yeah. absolutely <laughs> bullied Alatrian and I loved that I was here for it because I don't I don't spend a whole lot of time outside of my main only because my main is is how I experience or interface with Monster Hunter sure, that's like sure. my Monster Hunter experience that's why I really enjoy Glaive it sung to me uh, more than any of the other weapons did prior in like Portable 3rd or in, even sure. in Monster Hunter 4 it didn't sing to me but um, at the end of the day I mean like seeing you pick up just about any weapon ubiquitously and just mm. dunk on a latry in the way that you have has just been it, it gives me life man <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and and that's that's part of it because like uh, it's a controversial monster everyone's like oh, i still can't beat a latry and i was like look if i get through this challenge and i'm not like a super duper holy speed runner guy you know what i'm saying like if i get through right. it you could get through it too and that's that's the idea is like yo it's not impossible maybe you got to make a couple changes to what you're doing maybe change your approach but if i could do it you could do it you know what i mean but um yeah so the glaive conversation i was like oh bet so glaive's your main how are you feeling about some of the wild stuff that's coming out you know the helicopter bounce is gone uh i know and, and all kinds of stuff i was like oh this is this is a little different you know I, i'm you know i'm lurking i stay on the twitter i'm lurking i'm in the reddits and uh, a lot of people are having a lot of opinions about the insect glaive but you know it's not my main but i you know i play it but I want to hear from <laughs> Glaive Main himself. Like, bro, how are you feeling about how Wild's Insect Glaive is shaping up? I'm, about, I'm two minds about it. So first off and foremost, clearly this is iterative upon World's design, right? Like mm. World's has a very characteristic thumbprint and it's very clear that World's team wanted to help that evolve in a, in a, a new and fresh way. But at its core, it's very similar, both aesthetically and mechanically. So I like the fact that they've taken a step forward. I like and I'm very much looking forward to the changes. The other piece that I'm of two minds about, and this is the part that I dislike, was it ended up being the first Instagram reel that I've, I've put out there mm. that went viral because okay. of those changes. And boy, howdy, did all the toxicity that I never got to see in the Monster Hunter community come out in spades. <laughs> Man, I never saw yeah. this. Yo, I gotta scroll through right. those comments just to see. So, like, what, like, what's good? Like, what happened? What did you say? What, what came out? Like, so, <laughs> oh boy. So for me, like, it was just highlighting the fact that it, it was kind of like a green screen meme sort of a thing. It was just a meme short, if you want to call it that, where mm -hmm. like it was it was d this girl who was just kind of like walking off and crying. And like me, when, you know, I find out that they, they got rid of the aerial bounce in, right. in Wilds, right? And the, the number of people coming in for hate for Glaive mains, it was insane. Crazy. Yeah. And so the, the hate all stems from aerial attacks. Mm. So it, any any seasoned Glaive veteran has heard somebody be like, oh, stop buzzing around. You're not playing optimally. You're not you're not doing enough damage. You're not doing enough DPS. Um, and so all of these people are like, oh, good. Then maybe a Glaive main can learn to fight or, or the crazy. other rather. Right. That's right. Crazy. And so for me, like if you were to watch any 
uh, speedrunner guide or if you're going to watch any uh, of the the kind of like upper echelon fatalis guides and whatnot where you're talking about like hey this is how you kind of min max this is the strategy to to face fatalis with glaive or these are the kind of things that you want to be looking out for you're doing your plunges your your wyvern dives mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. especially if you're looking to get that second eye you've got to be very pinpoint on on fatalis's head get those horn breaks accurate, so yeah right so for me when i'm talking about these changes i'm optimistic about it. i'm not really upset about losing the bounce for instance i liked it it was really handy for uh being able to maneuver yeah but it didn't it, it wasn't necessary for sure for sure but now i just want it back just to spite <laughs> all of the haters <laughs> right, right. yeah and like from from the outside looking in right it, it does right. kind of seem like oh yeah glaive players got it safe they could just jump over everything and you know they 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 do the attacks but i, right. I don't know i feel like a lot of that that hate kind of comes from this I don't even I don't even have like a good word for it. And this is a video I got in the way in the back of my mind, closer to release. But uh, the the over optimization, like don't optimize the fun out of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it right. Like you got 50 minutes and three cards to kill this thing. We are gonna be fine. Like relax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't gotta. You took 10 minutes and oh when you're supposed to only take nine for the nine. You <laughs> like bro? Oh my we, god. Can ah. we, like can we chill? <laughs> like don't don't over optimize the fun out of the game. And like if you don't play the weapon in any capacity it could kind of seem like oh yeah they got it easy they jump over all the attacks you never have to blah 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 but and and you know the whole like oh yeah the area of bass is so suboptimal thing is with the other weapons you guys are stuck on the ground so like mm -hmm. a breath attack for example in the alatreon run i see the ice i'm like oh yeah i'm about to go in i, I can aggress here whereas other weapons i'd have to sheath run out of the cone then reposition where glaive they got the jump and they got the attack, they got the go forward, just ah, and now they're in the mix of it. You do a wyvern dive and then get back to the ground game where the damage really comes from. So it, it right. it's a bit more like complex than like they just kind of jump through the air and blah, blah, blah. like that's not even really how that goes. So I'm like, yeah, I can see some people are like, man, I'm sad I lost the bounce, but your identity is still there. You still get to have the aerial mobility to jump over attacks and you'll be able to take advantage of smaller openings with uh certain monster attacks because you could simply mm -hmm. jump over them unlike the rest right. of them, which is still there you know so hey if you're a glaive player and you're like i'm sad it took away the bounce they didn't we're still gonna be fine it's gonna be great you know what i mean so what i love about like the changes and whatnot like okay so i lost my bounce i can't perpetually keep myself aerial or airborne as long as i have stamina no worries no worries there's new things that i can do so I, what i really like is that there's i think it's tied into the drill but i don't remember exactly what the the name of the attack is called but basically you can get extracts from everything that the kinsect like just travels through it like clips through the monster right and any any sort of body part it'll get that extract and it can be buffed to carry three extracts at a time yeah so for me it's like okay so what they're looking for us to do is more quickly and more readily get all of our extracts up um and then to utilize the burst mechanic which expends it spends all of your your extracts in one super powerful attack and to, to me i think that that's i think that's cooler than being able to perpetually keep myself up there i'm not that caught up about sure. it for sure um the the rising spiral slash right it's kind of like yeah. a yeah like an ultimate attack like if you have three you're gonna spend all three of your extracts and do this big like jumpy attack type thing which it, right i don't even know how to like i saw it used i was like dang that look crazy but the thing is um of the monsters revealed so far i don't think we've seen its full potential yet because like uh, ray dow like yeah he's flying wyvern but i think on like a bigger or taller monster when you do right. the rising spiral slash and you can stand under a monster and like do that, oh, I think it's going to be crazy. And uh, yeah, you're already kind of bleeding into the next thing I wanted to bring up. It's like, yeah, sure, they took away the bounce. But like it does seem like Capcom wants us to lean into this more extract focused gameplay, right? With the small mm -hmm. changes like the focus mode telling you what extract you're going to get from which body part just by looking at it, which is huge. Like we used to have to guess. Um, and then the the triple the triple extract like you can get extracts so much faster 
And with this right. rising spiral slash, I think they want us to get and spend extracts faster than we ever have before. And you like know, recycling them. Yeah. So, you know, what was interesting about that was because of the way that the extracts work when you had all three extracts in world, it kind of de-incentivized you to get all of three of the extracts because then it's it's on its own cooldown. Once you mm -hmm. have all three, it's like, OK, great. You can't re up the cooldown by getting the extract again. So right. if you got just white and say red, then you, you could keep two of the three up and just recycle them. Or yeah. if you just want, you could just get red because that was what upgraded your move set. True, so true. so in, in this case, you need all three of the extracts to be able to upgrade the move set in the same way that you had historically gotten the upgrade from just the red one. So yeah. I think yeah. you're right on the money. They're, they're pushing us into, okay, we're going to use this as a resource, kind of like the... A, the icing on the cake, as it were, for us to push ourselves through. We spend our extracts, and then we just go get them all over again real quick. Exactly. We're topping ourselves back up, so we don't have to worry about that cooldown having its kind of like its own limit. Right, because yeah. you you will have more control over the cooldown, and it's easier to get extracts than ever before. And like right. much much to many Rise haters' dismay, it kind of does remind me of Rise, where like. It's much easier to get your extracts, right? With the, um, the, the aerial attack that we had where you can like focus on what you want to hit. And when your right. basic hits that, you get the extract and you're still in the air doing the, the aerial thing. You know how the glaive is. And then you can boom, hit the red, boom, hit the, hit the orange. And then we had the, what's it called? Off the top of my head. Awakened Kinsect attack where you mm -hmm. spent all of the extracts. So I'm like, oh, there's a little bit of rise DNA here. And I, right. I think that's where they're like, okay, we want more insect in our insect glaive, right? Like, <laughs> use yeah. more insect, you know? Because it used to be, I mean, in my experience sometimes, like, I used to just think of the insect as like, all right, I got to get the little bug juice thing, and then I get my real move set, and then that's it. Right. And I didn't really use the kinsect as much, whereas in this one, even just based off of the small footage we've seen, the kinsect is always attacking, it's always gathering extracts, it's easy to grab mm -hmm. all three, it's it's very much in there. It's almost like we always have an, uh, an assist-type kinsect. And it's right. always out. It's always doing something. It's like, hey, they they really putting the insect back in insect glaive. I kind of I kind of yeah. like this direction that they're going in, you know. So I was like, okay, I, I see what they're getting at. Yeah, it's sad we lost yeah. the bounce, but more insects. But it, if if okay, so but if it's such a um, if it's gone in the direction of just being more or organic sort of interactions, your 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 insect is is now more integral to your your combos or you have more agency over what buffs that you have or what buffs you're carrying at a given moment i, I ultimately feel that it's a net positive and so for for all of the the glaive haters and whatnot that are out there they better they, uh, listen they better take our names out of their mouth all right because mm -hmm. look we're, you haven't even seen the best of glaive yet True, true. Yeah, glaive players are gonna cook, man. They're they're gonna they're gonna show up in spades and they're gonna be like, okay, no bounce, that's not an issue. Whereas like it's gonna kind of it's gonna be funny because like all of the I don't know the, the word is I guess tourists, right? Insect glaive tourists, like I only play glaive so I can do the bounce bounce, <laughs> right? Like you know, which is cool. <laughs> that's a play style. If that's what you want to do, that's cool. I'm not hating on you. Like if you're really mad that that's gone, but I think the die hard insect glaive, like oh yeah, I've been here since four four base for if you're in japan we right. only got four of you in the west been here right. since four loving it let's go and we're gonna see uh you know insect glaive main stocks rise up because then you know all of the people who don't play the weapon or who look at the weapon a certain type of way like oh they just do the aerial thing they don't even really have to play the defensive part of the game blah 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 they're gonna be like oh wait these guys are really good now like their weapon is different mm -hmm. and they still post good times and they're still going crazy on hunts and they still help out with the powder and all that stuff so i'm, I'm really excited to see how insect glaive mains like yourself pick up the weapon and just super adapt to it and go crazy i'm excited too because now we don't have to worry about like the clutch claw now granted i mean mm -hmm. clutch claw is the savior of the fight in with Fatalis, if the fight with Latrian, like especially towards those endgame Iceborne ones where to add additional difficulty or substance to the fight, Capcom just kind of tacked on all of this HP. So you had to play yep. kind of like efficiently, right? Mm. So 
what's going to be most different is I'm, I'm not going to have access to that. Now, one of the things that I would use Ariel a lot for, if I wasn't doing my Wyvern dive, it, I could also plunge down and grapple on with the mm -hmm. exactly right mm -hmm. and then clutch claw into either a, a weakening so i'm softening up the hide or uh into a a flint shot for a wall bang sure. so in either of those cases those are lots of really good utility that's just not going to need anymore and so i'm very excited about being there and being a much more grounded but fluid mm -hmm. uh sort of combat style the one thing the one thing that i think was a real um, sticking point for me with some of the larger weapons is that uh, larger weapons have the potential to scoop. So if you've ever been scooped by your your friend, you're up in the air yeah. <laughs> and you can do nothing about it, right? So you can do that with the glaive. And I forget which move it is, but it does interrupt um, the, the motion or the animation. So it's going to be interesting now that all of these glaives are a little more homebound, you know, they're on the ground, sure. they're footed. I, I think that that's going to add a bit of a, of a dynamic where people might wonder, oh, maybe it was better to have all of the glaives in the air because <laughs> we're not getting scooped. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, look, as, as a resident scooper, look, I, hammer me. I'm, look, I love it too, Charge. It, it's one of my best gap closers. Just don't be by the head. I, I might scoop you up on accident. My fault. I'm sorry. But then I get the KO, and you know we're, we all we're all in love again. Um, but <laughs> uh, but another thing that I'm really excited to to see come back to insect glaives um, is that they're really going to be the mount specialist again. We kind of lost mm -hmm. that a little bit in in rise where like everybody could do it if you just use silk buying it's very easy to right. just get like a it's a wyvern ride but it, it's a mount you, you know what they did you know what i'm saying yeah so like we, we're going back to the just sweet monte days you know what i'm saying we're going back to a hey, glaives in the house <laughs> we're getting knockdowns baby you know so i'm really excited for people to be happy that hey glaive is glaive is here cool they're gonna get the mounted finishers they're gonna open up the wounds on the back they're gonna get more part breaks in the hard to hit spot like you know sappy jiva's back don't nobody be breaking oh sappy jiva's back don't nobody do that insect glaive man no oh they they in there they doing that because they're going to get two three mounts of hunt and they're going to break yep. the back so i think i think you guys the stocks are going to go up and you're going to gain more respect as hey they got to be a little bit more grounded not too much in the air love to see it so okay cool cool i'm, I'm happy to hear that uh you're ready to just adapt you're like you know what yeah cool i'm a little sad over the bouts being gone but for the most part we're gonna be fine yeah mm -hmm. cool cool i um, think any uh, any glaive main like any self-respecting glaive main recognizes that there's value in the aerial mm -hmm. but value in the aerial is like hey this is what i need to use just like any other move in any other weapons sort of skill set right you're not going to be going in for a really heavy charge swing when you know the the monster is literally over there and not paying attention to you right like nice. there's there's no point so you're going to use it as and when it calls for it and when is a good time to to utilize it and so any self-respecting -respect glaive main is going to recognize when it's time to be in the air and when it's time to be on the ground. Now with this, these changes, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited how it shakes up the dynamic a little bit. Yeah. And I'm excited to adapt, learn, grow, like just get excited about my new rotation, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of got to learn it again, like um, like how, like what Hunting Horn mains went through with Rise came out. Brand new moveset almost. It's going to be like, hey, okay, let me, yep. let me get used to this. <laughs> and, you know, we'll see from there. But I guess at the end of Wilds, we'll have the conversation where should they bring the bounce back? And then we'll, you know, hey, it's going to be good. So, boom, that's the Glaive conversation wrapped up. Glad glad we got that. This is great. Hey, hit the comments down below. Tell, tell us how you're feeling about Glaive. Um, but... Now, this video is actually going to do double duty. So, uh, we kind of lined up this collab before we got the announcement that we're getting a live stream next week on Wednesday. Uh, yes. Let me, get, let me pull up the time for you. Uh, October 23rd, uh, 7 o'clock PDT or 15 o'clock BST, right? So, dog, what do you think we're going to get there? You know, like up to this point, it's kind of been a little bit predictable where you're like, okay, they're going to show us a new locale. Okay, they're going to show us what the new locale's weather condition is. Uh, okay, they're going to show us the apex. But now, we're at this point where I'm like, 
they have a couple different directions they could go with this. Like, I don't know what actually to expect here. So let's see what you're thinking about. And then I'll, I'll tell you about what maybe directions I think we're going to go. So what you think? Okay. Man? Okay. Uh, well, we already know that we've got like a story trailer. I mean, that was covered by Alma pretty much. And, and that was, that was a fantastic little trailer. They've covered the Scarlet Forest. They've covered the Windward Plains. Um, but it led into a little bit of like the intrigue behind the people of the Windward Plains and also the, the young boys people, you know, who were attacked, you know, by the white wraith and, and kind of leaning into all of that. So we've got, we've got some like mystery that's going on there. And I think that if, if anything, they might intersperse, they'll probably have a new trailer. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that they're going to have a new trailer. Uh, but I don't think that they're going to really give us a lot. They might intersperse maybe a little more of the teasing details about like the backstory that we're going to be pretty much, you know, getting the moment that we start playing the game. So I, I think that that's probably where they're going to get with it. Ruricon did a really great um, uh, interview with the directors. And he did ask one thing in particular that's been kind of heavy on the minds of the Monster Hunter community. And it was, hey, look, I, I appreciate that you want to show off these monsters, but there is a number of people who felt like you had so much spoiled for us with, with World, for instance, where they knew the entire roster before the game was even released, before the game was, you know, like um, close to release. Everybody knew. So are you going to scale that back a bit? And they said, hey, look, we've, we've more or less got a much larger audience now. We don't have to show all of our cards. So I think they're going to hold a little bit to their chest and we don't have to worry about having everything spoiled for us quite so much as we did, say, with World and Rise. And I think it's going to be much more just the teaser. Yeah. Okay. The other piece of it is, is that I think that they're also probably not going to be giving us a playable demo. Really? You don't think we're going to get a playable demo? I don't. Okay. Huh. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I was, I, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, man, what could they really show us at this point now? Right. Cause like, right. Yeah. You could show us another locale and then like hide the weather condition. Right. Like they did with the Scarlet Forest. Cause like we knew the Scarlet Forest existed and then they didn't say like, oh, this is the inclemency. And it turned out to be rain, which is, I, I was like, okay, that's. That's boring, sure. quote unquote. But sure, like, yeah, sure <laughs> I, right? I loved it to be honest with you, but only because I really like the rain. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Like, like it could have been. I don't know. I was, I was getting crazy with the speculation. I was like, okay, the Scarlet Forest, red. Maybe there's dragon energy in the rain. You know what I'm saying? Like, just oh, right? yeah. yeah. Like it mm -hmm. could be something like that, but it's it's something more analogous to what you'd see in the real world rather than something that's yeah. Monster Hunter specific, right? Like, uh, jet powered. Or no, dra jet dragon powered, like what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we got, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We got, <laughs> we, got, we got jet engine dragons that run off dragon energy in the world. Like, that's a real thing. So right. it's like they could get a little bit whimsy with the weather conditions, but we got regular rain, which is cool. I'm not hating. Um, but they could right. show, like, uh, I'm, I'm speculating there's going to be like a hot map and a cold map, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's curious that we start in the desert, but we don't need cool drink yet because it's the first. Anyway, but like maybe there's a lava map where we need the cool drinks and maybe there's a hot map uh, or a hot map that we need cool drinks and a cold map where we need hot drinks. I literally it did not occur to me until just now, because like the, <laughs> the especially like in Tri, for instance, or in third generation, you went out to the desert, man, you needed those cool drinks. You need the cold drinks. Right. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So and, and that's <laughs> that's something that like I've spun in my head. I was like, wow, we're going to the desert first. Usually they save the desert for later because forgetting your right. cold drink is such a huge penalty. Your HP. Mm, 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 right. Yep. And then like the ice map tends to be like maybe second to last because if you forget your hot drink, OK, your stamina is going to run out slower or quicker than normal, which is some weapons that's oh, take it or leave it. Yeah. Some yeah. weapons are like, oh, I can't live without my stamina, but I can eat meat to be fine. But like, yep. you know, desert and volcano are typically last because the penalty for not being prepared is your HP is constantly going to be draining. And uh, we saw yep. that um, there's a food item in one of the, the, the live streams that they had. They were talking about how like the new food works and there's like a sizzling platter and it was like plus 10 defense or something like that if you're in an, a hot area or a cold area. And I was like. That's an interesting, like, what, what you mean by that? Like, are cold drinks, hot drinks coming back? 
You know, so okay. that, that kind of led me to, okay, we're going to have a hot map and maybe a cold map and maybe those two maps are connected, whatever, whatever. So I was like, they right. could show cold map and then like not show us the blizzard, not show us like any monsters that are in it. The same thing that they did to Scarlet uh, Forest. Right. Or they could lean into, all right, we've shown you the flagship. You guys know right. Arkveld. We can deep dive into Arkveld a little bit and tell you guys a little bit about what he's going to bring to the table. You know, because like flagships tend to bring their own kind of gimmick or right. something. So they could, that that could be what they show. They could just show us, hey, here's an Arkveld hunt. And like maybe not even just go into detail about what's going on. Just like, right. okay, we're just going to kill an Ar- Arkveld today. Okay, that's it. Bye. And just not explain <laughs> anything. Right. And then you are right. going to be on the case. You're going to be in there like. Hold on, hold on. Frame number that 10. pixel is out of order. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is great. Like I, I would love yeah. if they lean into using the, the passionate fans that they have to do that. Like right. I would love that kind of thing. Like yeah, we're gonna hunt Narkveld. I'm not gonna tell you anything. Boom. That would be really cool, and I could definitely see that. Where if that's like the gameplay, not necessarily a new demo, like a public player demo. But mm-hmm. if they're going to, if that's the demo that they might showcase that they are playing themselves i could see a new demo in that regard where mm-hmm. that's what they're going to be showcasing because just like they went to the ray down est in in uh gamescom for example okay cool well now this is going to be Arkfeld, and them highlighting their new flagship monster that would definitely be on brand yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, i could i could see that yeah, like they could just be in our and like they show us, you know, a little bit of a little bit of the hunt, whatever, boom, and then they don't really expand on it, and then you know, uh, eventually, hopefully, a player demo comes <laughs> out, right? Even if it's like a um, not something you download, like maybe something you have to log in, so that way they could keep it, because that's that's another like issue with the demo is when they release mm. demos, there's gonna be uh, guys that like dive into the demos and really like peek through all the code and oh, these monsters are in it. And and I think they wanna keep the stuff closer to their chest. So they might do something like right. an online beta where, I don't know, maybe you gotta sign in somewhere and then you play it, you know, that way it's not on your hardware and they can keep the secrets to themselves, but we still get to play the game. I, I would be okay with something like that because for me, I also don't want to get spoiled. I literally don't want somebody like, you know, let's say it's two days before Wild's release. We waited over a year, right? Mm-hmm. It'd be a year and two months, three months almost. And now somebody's completely leaked the entire game online. All of the, the files have been data mined. Yeah. And, you know, somebody's out there just because it's been so hype is like, oh, here's all the details. Here's every monster. Here's everything that happens. Here's the entire plot. I'm like, oh, I would hate that, that would yeah. suck. Right. Like, so I, I would definitely wouldn't want somebody to have access to something that they could data mine. So if they could keep it kind of like held back a little bit. So it's, you know, something that we're kind of streaming down to our hardware, so to speak, and not have actually installed directly on it. I'd be mm-hmm. fine with that. Yeah. That'd yeah. be fun. That way they could keep some of the secrets and, you know, not let the data miners go to work. Now, like, I personally don't like covering, you know, leaks and stuff of that nature. I just, I don't know, man. Like, I know some people are sensitive to it. Some people are sensitive yeah. to even the promo material we're getting right now. Like, after, I know. Yeah. After the Scarlet Forest live stream, they were like, okay, I've seen enough. I don't want to see any more of the game. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to unsubscribe, Jay, but I'm going to subscribe again when the game come out. And I was like, okay, you know, well, hey, it is what it is. Because like, wow. yeah, yeah, <laughs> bro. some people are mad Yo, sensitive to it because like they're like, respect. Oh, yeah, respect yeah. yeah. Capcom is showing too much of the game. I don't want to see no more of the game at all, even if it's official Capcom stuff. And I was like, ah, I'm going to cover it if it's official Capcom stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what, what we do. <laughs> we gotta make it bread and butter man <laughs> yeah that's, that's what we gotta do so uh, i get it you know a lot of people don't want the entire monster roster just out yeah. there you know and I, I don't think they're gonna do it again um but you know if i mean looking at the 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 cadence right like every at the end of every month almost we get something you know so yeah like, let's, yeah so like let's say i don't know this live stream is the archibald thing and then mm-hmm end of november they show us there's a cold bat right and then end of december they show us it's, it's a blizzard and then end of january <laughs> they show the lava map and then end of february they release the game and then we barely know anything and then maybe there's even like a hidden fifth map that they didn't even talk about like something like a unique like a rotten veil or a coral highlands you know something less predictable yeah yeah 
I mean, I, I, it's they've been on quite an aggressive roll ever since Gamescom. I mean, prior to that, which it really started off, I feel, um, what was it? It was um, that Sony State, State of Play, Play right? Yeah. 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 That that really like amped it up when they when they dropped the the release date, but um, I, I'm pretty confident that TGA this year, sure, it's going to come with its own um, with it with its own trailer. Uh, but I mean, that's only what three months before release. Pretty confident we would get a demo then that like a playable public demo at that mm-hmm. point, um, which which I'm also very excited about. Like, fam, I, I don't know about you, but, like, I I am so ready to dive in. And if you had kind of watched, like, the, the release date, like, for the announced to release for sure. the last three games, four, correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but it, it was, like, six to nine months from mm-hmm. announce to when it released. I mean, yeah. this is more than double that. Yeah, and somewhere in between... Right. And yeah. somewhere in between was at some point a demo of some sort. So I really find it difficult to to imagine that Capcom wouldn't put out some sort of demo and around the three month mark. So, I mean, if it's excuse me, if it's the announce that was six to nine months before the release, somewhere in the middle, about three months for mm-hmm. example, would be kind of like that middle mark. Yeah. And so three months uh, three months ahead of Wild's release, I think, would track. And then TGA, I mean, TGA yeah. 2024, man. It'll yeah. be a year year anniversary of Wild's announced, man. Oh, man, I'm so yeah. hyped. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's true. That, that, that does, like, track. Because I remember, um, more specifically, like, Rise, right? Rise demo days. Because mm-hmm. that's when, like, I decided, all right, I'm going to be a creator. Like, I have a Switch. Mm-hmm. My, my son has a Switch we can both play in the same cam and like, all right, he could be on the screen. I'm going to be here. And and that's, that's kind of how like the channel started. I was like, I don't want to be just another way. I just want to do something a little unique. So me and him, we hunted all these monsters. I was showing him the ropes and all that. He was like nine back then, bro. He's 13 now. It's crazy. But, Oh my um, God. Wow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Like demo rise days is how we got our start. So like, I definitely remember December, like, Hey son, I can, we can play Monster Hunter together. We have all the requisite hardware. It's never been this easy. Let's let's, let's. and he was let's he do was, it. Yeah, and he was like really interested in like LNB a YouTuber blah blah blah. I was like, all right, you think it's sunshine and rainbows, huh? All right, it's, <laughs> it's not, but I'll show you. You know, we we can be YouTubers too. Let's do it. And sometimes right. he, you know he'd wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, dad, I want some water. He's, it's midnight. I'm I'm here editing or something. He's like, Dad, what are you doing? Uh, I'm editing a video, son. Uh, let me get you some water. Let me help you. He's like, you're still working on that? I said, yeah. I did. Like, this YouTuber stuff is not easy, bro. We got You got to put in the work. And he's like, man, yeah. maybe I don't have the work ethic to be a YouTuber, which is kind of the life lesson. But, uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's how I got to start. So I definitely remember it was three months before release because daughter was born that March, right? Oh. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> daughter was born that March. I, like, it was crazy because she was born and then Demo Magna Malo came out the next day. So, like, I'm in, uh, yeah, yeah. So, we, we go to the hospital, we do the thing, we have the baby thing, you know what I'm saying? And then, yeah, like, yeah. check my phone. Oh, I'm crazy. Okay. You know, and she's, like, resting up. She's sleeping. I'm, you know, I'm in the room chilling just in case anybody needs nothing. But she's, like, sleeping, resting up, doing the thing. And I'm getting my ass whooped by Magna Malo. Well, <laughs> <laughs> putting the paws on me. But... <laughs> You know, so it, it was crazy because I remember like a nurse came in. I'm, I'm fighting. I'm doing the thing. I might be sweating a little bit. She's like, are you, are you okay? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. What's up? Y'all need something? Is, is baby okay? <laughs> like it was crazy. So I definitely remember December playing the game with him. And then three mm-hmm. months we had access to that demo as much as we wanted. Like it was crazy. So that does, that does kind of track what you're saying with. You know, maybe even like late November, or early December, because the game comes yeah. out late February instead of late March, like last time. Mm. Right. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I, I would I would be curious if there happened to be any events that they might be able unless Sony decides, oh, we're going to do another state of play so we can <laughs> cash in on this hype and sell more PS5s. Man, look, hey, that, a business transaction was had. OK, like Sony went to Capcom was like, hey, bro. Let me put this in all my I state of that. plays. Let me put this in all my state of plays. But I'm gonna leave this band right here on this table, 
if you pick it up, it's going to be at the state of plays. But if you leave it, that's okay. You know, Capcom's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, secure yeah. the bag. <laughs> um, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, we, we can do that. <laughs> I just know. I just know there was a handshake or something was happening in the background, mm-hmm. such as business. But talking about the demo, playable demo. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking about it, right? Do you think we're going to get, like, what we got at, uh, at like, TGS and, like, the desert only, or Windward Plains only, excuse me, with the mm-hmm. Ray Dow? Or do you think it's possible we get both the Windward Plains and the Scarlet Forest and you can travel between them? Because that's, like, the, the new big thing in the game, aside from, like, the whole two weapons and sacred and all that. Like, do you think it's possible we get two locales just so they can show off, like, yeah, bigger monster hunter game the maps are bigger and they're interconnected go experience that maybe it has a limited roster right between the two locales what you thinking man how do you think this demo is going to shake out so did you play i believe it was final fantasy 16 that did it this way so final mm-hmm. fantasy 16 did a demo like a hey you were going to give you the first four or five hours of the game in the demo and then your save file will carry over so if you want to pick up the game you can go buy it and then on release day you'll have you'll be able to pick up right where you left off Mm. but about a week or so prior i want to say to the release they also had another demo which gave you the iconic feats which is the the different it was different like arena style battles that you could do just to really get a flavor of some of the mid to late game uh like like skills and summon attacks and stuff like that i thought it was really well done so it was like a two stage but two different perspective style of demo one's showcasing the initial story and then the other one's showcasing some of the mid to late game combat that you'll be able to you know kind of thirst after as you go back to the beginning of the demo and be like oh yeah i'm puny again yeah so you you played as like clive when he was a kid right right yep the first the first chapter is, is him during adolescence and all of the kind of like set piece that catalyzes the rest of the game's plot loved 16 but the the point being is that i think with with what you're saying with because you now have the windward plains and you also have the scarlet forest um those have been prominent so in the event that let's say we get absolutely no new locales for the rest of the the year none of that is spoiled for us we have no idea what's what the ice biome is going to look like if there's a lava biome if there's a rotten veil biome we don't know okay cool then it would track in my opinion that they would have like hey like end of november uh you you get this you get the the windward plains that you can play for a week Mm. right or, or something along those lines and then at tga at tga um you got you know oh, scarlet forest drops this week scarlet forest mm. available now yeah. you know and then and then like who knows like through the month of january we'll do be, be doing like limited beta playing or beta tests and stuff like mm. that um to like stress test the servers because it's going to be cross-platform now sure sure so if, if the multiplayer is cross-platform, it's got to run off of Capcom servers, so they might be kind of ramping up to see what that's going to look like for them. Sure. So I would imagine that they would do it in stages. I just don't know exactly when, and I think that you're right. I think that you're onto something where you're going to get two different segments. You know how, like, in the... the Rise Sunbreak demo, I think that there's, like, three different missions that you can mm-hmm. go on. I think at yeah. first it was, like, three different... <laughs> And then, like, closer to Sunbreak actually coming out, they're like, ah, go try Malzino, right? And he was, like, super <laughs> buffed up, like, and that's, like, a, right. um, it's almost a tradition at this point, because, like, I remember getting my ass whooped by Velcana. I remember getting my ass whooped by yep. Magna Malo in the hospital after giving birth to yep. a baby. I remember getting my ass whooped <laughs> by Malzino. Like, they always release a demo version of the flagship that's just right. been in the weight room, just, what's up, baby? Probably, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, they're they're there. They're gonna they're <laughs> gonna knock on your doorstep. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah. So if that's the case, then they could even do like a one, two, three punch where you get like a quest out on the Windward Plains. You could get a quest mm-hmm. out on uh, the the Scarlet Forest, and then maybe even try against the White Wraith. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Here's Arkveld, but he's a little right. you know stronger than what you used to, and then it's. You know, it's, it's hard to it's hard to beat. It's hard to get through. You know, right? Um, and then another thing that maybe I want to talk talk about when when you know talking about a demo is uh, in the past these games are hard to demo 
because like <laughs> so much of the monster hunter experience has been lost in the demos before like you can't get to you can't pick your armor you can't mm-hmm. like ooh, okay my electric resistance is low let me adjust that and you know you, you lose the whole like okay go hunt monster to get better to hunt bigger monster you lose that in the demo because either you right. pick easy medium hard and then they give you a set of equipment it's almost like an arena quest Sure. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe they they select like the roster of monsters to where like I don't know I'm just gonna uh, Chattacabras here right you hunt the Chattacabras sure. maybe you get to make the Chattacabra armor which makes the Balahara fight easier and then you hunt Balahara make its armor and then that makes the Ray Dow fight easier and then you right. hunt Ray Dow and then Arkveld buffed up Arkveld comes out and then you wear the full Ray Dow armor to hunt Arkveld which really shows off the systems of Monster Hunter right um right i don't know if you've heard of hey jay that that dude is an example of why the demos aren't particularly good because he picked up rise's demo he was like yeah this game sucks i'm not playing it ah right but his community his chat everyone's like wait wait, wait. <laughs> listen listen look just give it a shot and now you look at his channel he's making monster hunter videos all the time he's going back in the past he you know like the chat really came through and was like wait wait, wait br- brother 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 listen just you gotta give it a shot the demo is not a good representation of the game of what you're missing. And he right. Was like, okay, I'll try it, and then fell in love with it. And I, and that's that's because these games are hard to demo. Like if you know what you're looking for, if you know what Monster Hunter is, you can I could you could just throw you in a game and you'd be like, oh, this is different, this is different. I get it, I get it. Okay, when the real game comes out, boom, bam, bam, bam. But if you're a brand new right. player, never heard of the series, don't know what Arathalos is. You play the game, sure. you're like, why is it so? Why are these controls like this? Slow. Why is it clunky? Yeah. yeah. You know? So I'm wondering if yeah. this demo is going to do a better job of maybe introducing brand new players into it by having yeah. more of the systems in it so that people can go, oh, I kill this monster. I make the hat. It makes making the bigger monster dead easier. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm just, right. I'm hoping we have a good demo in that aspect. All the demos are good, if you know what Monster Hunter is. But I'm hoping we have a good beginner-friendly demo that can introduce even more people into the franchise. Which is so, so f- first off, no love for Doshiguma, huh? <laughs> I, don't know, I was just saying, I was just saying whatever monster came to my head, and I had to make sure that the sizes was right. But yeah, <laughs> no, I get you. But but the, yeah, I think that it's important th- to recognize if you've played Monster Hunter in any meaningful capacity, you know that it's hunt gather craft yep. and then the cycle repeats yep. and so if you want a meaningful feedback loop if you want a good gameplay loop the end of the gameplay loop should organically or logically be fulfilled by the next step beginning the new, next loop right. so it, when you get that it, and monster hunter pulls this off very well but however you, you do need an investment of time mm-hmm. and sometimes people are like pushed away because it's like oh wait, this isn't play like devil may cry why is this hack and slash? What is this hack and slash? This isn't hack and slash at all. Wait, it's so slow. Why does it roll? Why isn't he rolling? Stop mm-hmm. swinging his attack. Yeah. If you get through that barrier to entry and you give it an honest shot and then you go through the first couple of fights and you're like, oh, cool, I can make this new armor from the bones of this frog that I just beat up. <laughs> <laughs> then, okay, cool. You got yourself some new armor and it's got some upgraded stats and you're not just going to some sort of inn or some sort of shop and like buying all of the, the latest and greatest swords and shields and whatnot. No, but I think that there there's also the the flexibility and that you have with the um uh the 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 demo that was already in gamescom you're in the tent and you could pick Mm -hmm. from pretty much all of the weapons anyway all the weapons were already there and available to you so you'd have the ability to at least do that much i think in the demo where Mm -hmm. you could pick whatever weapon that you wanted to try out maybe try out them all i mean hey why not they're there um and they even put in a lot of uh conversation about how alma can help you <clears throat> excuse me help guide new hunters figuring out what what weapon works for them through that little like questionnaire right so i think okay. i think that all the weapons should be available i don't know if they would allow us to like do all the upgrades though that would be cool yeah like it because i don't know like looking at it from a brand new player perspective you hunt the monster it dies and then right thanks for playing that's the only <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's all you get like <laughs> thanks for playing yeah. by the game it comes out you know it's like whoa the, the the feedback loop yeah. is cut you know if even if we got mm-hmm. like a small 
like portion of that feedback loop or you know it's it's open you go back to the town okay here's a stronger and like all of the 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 weapons are like fake right like they're they're not the real weapon so to speak oh yeah right right. they can make they can give you a new weapon that's like obviously stronger than the earlier one so that you can see oh i fight this thing now my sword does 15 damage instead of 10 oh i get it now i can go fight the bigger thing oh now my sword does 25 instead of 15 and then beginners will get the i understand the game now you know what i mean whereas right. like in the in the old demos it's like all right i beat it i played the demo thanks for playing you want to do it again <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, I've, I've i've got a uh i've got a charge axe and i just beat up a, a flower spider and put a flower on my charge axe and now it does 15 more damage <laughs> you mm-hmm. know like it's it would be pretty neat but yeah. right at but least it, to give people a flavor of right of of like what what the whole monster hunter experience is about because when you get to the end game i mean there's no one monster that is going to be the best equipment typically i mean if you were to look at the fatalist stuff like in end of world for instance okay i get it but um (laughs) generally speaking as you're playing through the game you're meta-ing against whatever monster that you're fighting Bingo. you know the monster <clears throat> if the monster does a lot of stun gem in stun resistance now you're gonna have if, if they're right if they're if they're weak to fire damage spec a fire weapon and try to build as much of that as you can um are you having a really hard time with that one attack that's hitting you every time and it takes most of your health at gem in more hp you know stuff like yeah. that where you Motivation are adapting roll yeah yeah bingo Exactly. And that's that's the core experience that I think that a lot of people really don't get to see with this tiny little demo vignette. And then really the demo is only serving to whet the appetites of people that are already in. You know, they're, everybody who's a Monster Hunter fan right now is locked in. We've already yeah. got us locked in. You don't need that's a demo it. to keep us locked in, you know. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I would love to see kind of a microcosm, like an accelerated version of that whole experience. But I, I don't know. It's I, I, know. I, I can't it's imagine tough. to pull it off. Yeah, yeah right. It, it, it's not an easy feat. Like I don't I don't envy Capcom. It this is <laughs> and like balancing this stuff and making sure it's it's correct and everything you know is doing what it's supposed to. It's it's tough. Like I don't envy. Like it's yeah. a hard job, you know. So, uh, but th- that's just one of the the pain points in particular that I have. But also, Monster Hunter has grown like crazy, man. Like <laughs> there are so many more people out here doing the word of mouth thing after world after rise like two games so 10 million plus there's gonna be somebody out there like i think i wore a, a devil joe shirt to the supermarket one time bro was like yo i love me some pickles too i was like bro you know, you know what this is all right I was let's like, go you know what this is? so yeah man we're, we're on the come up man we're on the come up so um yeah monster hunter is you know the rising tide and we are all ships on that tide so our stocks are going up and, you know uh, it. I'm so excited, man. So excited. So, uh, did you know that uh, Monster Hunter World on its own is not not con- not including Rise? Mm. Is is like there there was more sales of that than the first, second, third, and fourth fleets combined. Combined. Yes. Oh yeah, I've yeah. seen that chart. Yeah, there's a chart. Uh, I think like Gaijin Hunter posted it one time where it's like Monster Hunter Dose Try. For world, and I was like, oh, that's <laughs> yeah, crazy. it's insane, man. It, it's nuts. Oh my it god, nuts. So yeah, man, we're we're almost at an hour here. Um, but yo, this conversation was 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 great, man. I love love this. Never done, never hosted something like this. I've been on the receiving end of something like this before. Really? But yeah, yeah. I've never, but uh, I don't know. I had, you know, I was like, you know what, we can't do this. But man, tell everybody where to find you. Plug your stuff what videos you got coming up so that, you know, my guys can go show your guys some love, man, you know? (laughs) Awesome. I appreciate that. So uh, I do daily posts uh, uh, both on YouTube, but also on Instagram and also on TikTok. So you can just find me, Coyote Wildfire. If you Google search my name and see this face, uh, it's not me. Please run away. No, uh, (laughs) but I I do. I do try to make sure that I get at least a daily short out there, something that's, you know, kind of lighthearted, but on topic. And I'll also post things um 
uh, on my uh, Facebook page as well. Um, so yeah, Coyote Wildfire, that's where you can find me. If we're talking about like long form videos, I've been not working on a project as of the moment. This is actually the first long form project that I've been a part of for a little bit. Um, yeah, last one was uh, reacting to the, uh, the announcement. Mm. Which is big excite, and that was awesome. I got to give away a copy of Monster Hunter Wilds That's to. Right. That's right, man. I'm, I'm gonna talk to you about that because I was like, man, I want to do a giveaway, but I gotta do it right though. Like, I don't want sure. like some bot to take over and like win it or something. But I'm, I'm gonna ask you uh, right after we, you know, and and figure yeah. that out. So, yeah, y'all hear All that? Right. JK giveaways. <laughs> Watch out. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Coyote, okay? Coyote made the, the JK giveaways possible. So go show that man love. Go to his channel and, and drop a comment on, on all of his recent videos. And uh, yes, he does post mad shorts. Uh, I, I love the shorts personally. I, I typically watch them like in between clients at work. So I don't really like have the time to like drop a comment. But like, hey, I'll sure. be hitting the like. They're funny, bro. They're funny. So go show my man Coyote <laughs> some love, man. Uh, appreciate you being here, man. Thanks for being on. Uh, love having you, and I guess this is the first episode of the Jcast. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you man. so much for having me. Yeah, man. Thank you for coming. All right. As always, people, happy, happy hunting. Peace. <laughs>